Hello Internet, my name is Quinn and this is Blondie Hacks. This is Lathe Skills number 7, Turning to a Shoulder. This is a series of quick videos on getting started in machining. If you like my content, please do support me on Patreon, where I post exclusive project videos and drawings and 3D models and lots of cool stuff just for patrons. Okay, let's dive in. All right, we're going to start here at the learning bench, but don't worry, there won't be any math in this episode. Let's look at this operation with these comically oversized parts. Now, turning to a shoulder means we're doing two things at once. We're turning a diameter, but we're also facing an end. The way we do that is with a special tool bit, and this is uh, an inside corner turning bit, and that it may look like a 90 degree angle on the end there, but it's actually 85 degrees. And the reason for that is because once we start getting into this inside corner, as you can see there, there's just enough clearance to where we're not going to be rubbing on either of the two surfaces. And that's really uh, the, the secret to this. So you can either grind a bit with an 85 degree angle on it, or if you bought a pre-ground set, say from Grizzly or a little machine shop, it will have come with a bit like this. So it'll look like 90 degrees, but if you measure that guy, you'll find that it's actually 85. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to use this bit right now. So the first step is to get your tool post angle correct for this operation. And uh, you can just kind of line it up by eye. So what you're going to do is just kind of bring it in. You can use the surface of your material and a chuck jaw. And just make sure that uh, you're not going to be rubbing on either of those two surfaces once you get inside into that corner. This, this angle doesn't have to be exact because, again, remember, only a single point is actually doing the cutting. We just want to make sure that we're not going to be rubbing. So uh, get it so that you've got some daylight on both sides of that tool bit and lock it down and we're ready to go. Now we need to set up to hit our dimensions. Now, of course, we've got the, the turned portion is going to have a diameter specified in our drawing, but we're also going to have this depth right here from the end of the part to the start of the shoulder. This is also going to be specified in the drawing. And uh, so we have to be able to hit that. And that basically means we need to be able to move our carriage a specific amount and then stop it very precisely on each pass because we have to make sure that this uh, resulting face is flat. So there's a couple of ways to do that. Uh, the way I like to do it is using an indicator. Now uh, you need to first move your carriage into where it's going to need to stop. In other words, where the start of your shoulder is going to be. You might do that by scribing a line or you might do that if you have a DRO. You can measure your carriage travel or uh, you might even just do it by trial and error as you're turning the first pass. Uh, there's, there's various ways to do it, but uh, uh, get your, your tool bit set up to where the shoulder needs to start. And then set up an indicator on your carriage and zero it out. Uh, I like to use a, uh, a ways mounted indicator holder like this, but if you don't have one of these, you can also just set up an indicator on an indicator arm like this guy right here. Now initially this is just like any other turning operation, so I'm going to touch off. And then I can bring myself out here and I'm going to go in, let's do a 20 thou first pass just to clean up that surface. And then I'm going to start doing my turning. Now I've got you focused down there on the indicator because this is really the magic of this technique for turning perfect shoulders. I'm going to come in on this first pass and then when I get close it's going to touch up on my indicator. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to say between two and five thousandths short of my zero. I'm not going to get to all the way to that zero and then I'm going to wind back out and then I'm going to do another pass. And you're going to keep doing that on every single pass. Okay, doing another pass here, and once again, watch down here on my indicator. Coming in, indicator touches up, and I'm going to go to right about there, not quite to zero, and come back out, and dial in another pass. Now we're at the magic moment. So I've got one pass left to do to hit my dimension on the turned area. And I'm going to do that pass now, but now on my indicator, I'm going to go right to that zero. Okay, so I'm going all the way to zero, right there. And now I'm going to lock my carriage. Now let me bring you in close and show you what's going to happen here. If you look here, you can see on our face how the surface finish is kind of all striated. And that's because all we've done is multiple passes where we came up and stopped. And even though we may have stopped at the same mark on the indicator each time, it's never going to be perfect, right? So you're going to get these little uh, marks. And that's why we intentionally stop short of zero each time. And then our final pass, we go all the way into zero and then wind the cross slide out. And all in one step, we get our facing operation done. And 
just like that, we've got two perfect faces. The last thing I want to talk about is fillets, because turning to a shoulder is a great example of where the theoretical of the drawing meets the cold hard reality of the real world. Uh, you know, this, this may look like a perfect inside 90 degree corner, but in fact there's always going to be a little bit of a fillet on this inside corner here, and that's caused by the shape of the end of your turning tool. You may think that tool is extremely sharp, but at a microscopic level there's always going to be a little bit of a radius on that nose, and it shows up as a fillet. And the way that affects you is, let's say this ring here has been uh, machined to fit over this other part, and watch what happens. Now that slid right on there real nice and everything seems perfect, except there's a little bit of a gap back here. These two surfaces are never going to seat perfectly tightly together because of that fillet that's so small we can't even see it, but it's there. If it's critical that these two parts mate tightly together, there's two things we can do about that. Either we can machine a little bit of a chamfer on the inside corner here, which makes clearance for that invisible fillet, or we can actually go in and get rid of that invisible fillet with an undercut. There's two ways to do that. One is, uh, remember when we were at that magic moment where the indicator was at zero and we were just about to wind out? Instead of winding out, go ahead and push that cross slide in, just a couple of thousandths, usually all you need. Uh, if you get too greedy with that, you're going to get chatter, but uh, just push it in a little bit and then do your wind out to face the end of your shoulder. Now the other way to do it is uh, to use something like a parting tool and uh, just kind of come in here and just nibble out a hair right in there. And uh, I'm going to show you what that looks like right now. Okay, I've squared out my tool post for the parting blade and uh, I'm just going to ease it in here and just, just kind of touch that surface. That's really all you have to do. Now watch what happens when I slide this other part on here. There you go. Now it's a perfect fit. That mating surface is machinist quality, just like that. So that is turning to a shoulder in a nutshell. I hope you found this useful. Please do support me on Patreon if you like my content. I post exclusive videos and drawings and 3D models on there all the time for my patrons. So I think there's a lot of valuable content there. And uh, we will see you next time. Thanks for watching.